What's up, YouTube family? It's Dave Stone again with another live and exciting episode of Develop Awesome Skills. And today, we're gonna talk about how much Roundup is too much Roundup for your garden. Um, the reason I wanna talk about this today is because uh, I think most people don't really know what they're doing uh, to themselves or their garden when they use a little bit of Roundup. Um, so a couple of the questions that I want to answer here is how much Roundup is too much? Um, is it okay in small quantities for noxious weeds? So, oh, there's a little squirrel right there. <laughs> oh, I got to show you guys that. Look at that guy go. <laughs> little squirrel running around. What's up, dude? Hey, what's up, Juan Arco? See the squirrel? <laughs> Uh, okay, let's get back to Roundup, guys. So, uh, so how much Roundup is too much? Is it okay in small quantities? Let's start with that. Um, there we go. So, small quantities of Roundup is not okay. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna start by answering the question. The answer is how much Roundup is too much. All Roundup is too much, even a little bit, even a little bit of Roundup. Man, sorry about this camera, guys. That's better. Okay. So, round. what is Roundup anyway? Roundup is glycophosphate. That's the term for it, and uh, it's used, Monsanto makes it, and if you look at Monsanto, they're a huge company. They not only make Roundup, but they make GMO. They make the GMO seeds, and uh, what happens with GMO seeds is they'll coat the seed. Hey, Juan Arcos, use no Roundup. Let's use our hands and get dirty. Exactly. You know, instead of controlling the weeds with poison, we can control the weeds with wood chips. It's a few more manual processes, but there's also ways to control insects and weeds with certain herbal treatments. Um, but if you keep your soil healthy, Weeds are actually part of the landscape. They're part of the environment and they can actually help keep your soil like structured really, really well. Um, the Dust Bowl happened because, and all these haboobs out here in Phoenix happen because people till the land and they get down to the dirt and then when the winds come through, there is nothing holding that dirt together. So it just blows. So is it okay in small quantities? No, it's not okay in small quantities. Um, is it okay to use in pathways around your garden? So sometimes you'll have your little garden here and your, your garden over here and there's a little pathway. Maybe it's got wood chips, maybe it's just dirt. Maybe it's uh, paving stones and in between the paving stones you have grass coming up out of there. So you just feel like, I just have a little bit of Roundup I just got from Home Depot. I'm just gonna spray it on the, the ground um, in the pathway. The problem with that is it gets into the ground and what it does is it actually kills the roots. So that's what they advertise, it kills the roots. It actually sterilizes the ground and kills all of the microbiology that is in your soil, if there is any. It's really hard to find a lot of microbiology in Arizona soil unless it's mulched because we don't have any organic matter. We don't have a lot of trees dropping their leaves out here like in the forests or in the Midwest. So, um, we need to mulch ourselves in order to add the organic matter back in the soil. But if you do that, if you add the organic matter back in the soil, you're creating a microbial uh, ecosystem of plants, fungus, uh, of little uh, bugs, fungus, um, worms, nematodes, all those kind of things are living in the soil. There's millions and millions of them um, all the time. So if you use even a little bit of Roundup in the pathways, It'll kill all of the microbiology in your soil, in those spots. If the wind picks up, it'll blow some glycophosphate onto your garden and you will notice some wilting. Um, how does glycophosphate interact with our soil ecosystem? Well, that's the whole point of glycophosphate is it kills everything. It kills every living organism there. And if we consume it, if it gets in our garden on any of our edible leaves and we consume glycophosphate, terrible, terrible for us. There's been many studies done and it's, it's one of those things that when you look at the studies on glycophosphate, I have no idea how it's even legal. Um, 
it, it sh it's like DDT became illegal, but glycophosphate is even worse than that, and it's legal. There's a legal amount of glycophosphate in some of our food, right? And does that does that make sense? So it's like, is it, uh, all the wheat that's processed right now is G most of it's GMO. I don't know if you guys know that. It's genetically modified. So what happens is the farmers buy the wheat seeds that are coated in glycophosphate and it's red. The seeds are usually red. And then what happens is they will plant the seeds in very sterile ground. Now the only reason these seeds will grow in sterile ground is because they've made these GMO seeds to work and interact with all of their chemical fertilizers and with all of their pesticides so the glycophosphate is used in a handful of different ways it's just one of the many poisons hey Edmundo it kills everything even killing people with cancer Nikki H it's contributing to the rise of Parkinson's disease exactly guys there so you all you are on the right track right now with glycophosphate you understand and, and you and most of the people that are watching my channel or Jake Mace's channel or Seamus's channel or uh, Jay Behringer's channel all that kind of stuff every all you guys know this but there's a lot of people out there that are not really aware. They think a little bit of glycophosphate is fine, like a little bit of Roundup, just to kill the weeds around my pathways. Um, maybe it takes a little bit more work to pull the weeds up, but I think that's what you should do. So um, if you don't want them there, um, you can also keep them trimmed back. A lot of weeds are good weeds. Bermuda grass is super obnoxious. I'm not gonna lie about that. Um, I wouldn't mind getting rid of it in my yard, but I'm uh, sorry about that, it's a little tilted. Um, okay, so I'm gonna, the last thing I want to kind of mention about Roundup is, is really ultimately what is it? What is Monsanto doing when they're creating these poisons? Um, there's two things. First off, it is a poison. Um, but what they're doing with it, they're making money. And there are big grants out there for farmers to house and use pesticides. So if, if you want to house and use pesticides, they will give you millions of dollars to do it. So a lot of these people, it really is about a lifestyle. It's about, about keeping up a lifestyle. And uh, while we're killing the soil, it doesn't quite make sense to me, guys. So, um, but here's why it makes sense is because like I had, I said once more in one of my earlier videos is if we're not living, we're dying just like these plants. If they're not sprouting new growth, then there's something wrong and you gotta kind of address that. Here's the problem, these huge companies take that. Hey, kitty, my kitty got out. Hi, baby. How you doing? Come say hi to everybody. Come say hi to everybody. This is Bogart. She likes walking around in the... Uh... Well, hey, baby. See, she wants to get down. All right. Um, so the other thing is, it's a business model, guys. Uh, this is the big thing to think about. You're either growing or dying. This is what these huge companies take all the way to the extreme. So everything can be taken to a crazy extreme on one side or the other. And this is what's happening with Monsanto is it's a business model. They actually have to make more money and more profits for their shareholders every single month. And if they don't, their shareholders aren't happy. So what does this do? It forces them to grow even though they know that they're doing something that isn't beneficial to the human race. And what are they saying that they're gonna do? They say that they're gonna try to cure world hunger with these GMO seeds. No, the way to cure world hunger is to grow organically everywhere because when you spray on your neighbor, on your yard, if your neighbor has a garden on the other side, that's just what happened. And my moringa tree is wilting right now, and and that's the only reason I'm taking, I'm, I'm saying this right now, guys, because I want you all to understand, even a little bit of Roundup is not good. What you're doing is you're supporting these huge companies. Nikki, are you good in terms with your neighbors? Talk to them. It's a matter of educating them. Okay, that's a really good point on the effects of um, our health and the environment of Roundup on our health and the environment, offer some options for weed control. Yeah, Nikki, it's, it's a really great idea, and I, I haven't talked to him about it. It was only a couple days ago, um, but I, 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 I will. I mean, I will. I just want to be respectful, too, because it is his property, and I think everybody, they can do whatever they want on their property. It's just when it borders yours and you have a garden, it still can affect yours. So um, I wouldn't put anything, if you want an urban farm, if you want to grow things on your property, y y here's, okay, so this is one thing I didn't mention. What, 
What does it actually do? Now, why does it sterilize the soil? And then if it sterilizes the soil, how, do the, how does this wheat and all this other stuff grow when they spray this uh, Roundup on it all the time? Well, it grows because the soil does not have life of its own anymore, right? So you have to add chemical fertilizers to these GMO seeds in order for anything to grow. So the soil has become addicted to chemicals. The soil has become addicted to this chemical fertilizer. If you did not put the chemical fertilizer on the soil, on these GMO crops, and use Roundup and all these other stuff to control the monoculture bugs that come in, try to wipe them out, if you, it, um, wow, I lost my train of thought. Sometimes I do that, guys. I'm like bouncing all over the place, but um, it, it's super passionate. So basically, it sterilizes the soil, the soil becomes addicted to chemicals, just like a drug addiction or an alcohol addiction or any other kind of addiction that we have. And then once it becomes addicted to those chemicals, if you pull those chemicals away, it won't grow anything for many years unless you mulch it heavily and get rid of all that stuff. The problem is trying to get rid of glycophosphate in the soil is a very difficult task. So um, the other thing that glycophosphate is really affecting right now are the bee populations. Colony collapse disorder, guys. See? C D <laughs> colony collapse disorder. Why is that going on? Well, that is happening a lot in part. Now everybody's like, I don't know why it's happening. I'm not really sure why colony collapse disorder is happening. Well, I'm going to tell you one of the reasons it's happening is because of the insecticides and the pesticides and the GMOs and the Roundup and all that kind of stuff. The herbicides that we're spraying on everything as a mass population. This stuff is illegal in a lot of countries in the world, but because America is based on capitalism, anybody that has a lot, a lot of money can buy all of the uh, rules and regulations they need. They can make something legal that isn't healthy for anyone, that gives people cancer. And that's not what any of us should be about. We should not be about making only money. We should be about doing something that not only fulfills our lives, but and our passions, but actually makes the world a better place, makes people a little bit healthier. And this is why I jumped on the Moringa bandwagon, guys. And I hope you guys jump on the Moringa bandwagon with me. Hashtag, I want more Moringa. Go there, guys. Let's join this movement. Let's plant a million trees in five years. And uh, if you guys watched the video from yesterday, you'll see the, uh, the orchard that we got. Super excited about it. Episode 80 is the orchard. Um, it's raw land right now, so it's going to take a little while for it to get there. But uh, if you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, uh, if you don't like what I said, if you like what I said, throw it in the comments. Um, I want to I see what kind of support I get. Give me a big green thumbs up, guys, if you like this video. Subscribe to my channel and share this video with the world. Let's make this go viral because uh, we really need people to understand that Roundup is not okay. I got another little kitty visiting me right now. Hi, baby. Where are you going? Oh, she's a little skittish. But that's Jermaine. Actually, I'm going to go show it to you. <laughs> Hi, honey. So we really, we haven't been letting the kitties out, but this one, Jermaine, has been a little Houdini. She gets out all the time. And uh, she really likes it outside. But I'm trying to train her for the backyard so she doesn't get in the street. Got to get her a little collar, too. But anyways, guys, um, until next time, Emilio, I agree with you. Say no to Monsanto. Watch your pets around pesticides. Oh, exactly, Nikki. So if you're going to use pesticides or insecticides and you have pets, definitely it's not good for them. If it causes cancer in humans, it can definitely do some bad stuff to the animals. So I got a lot of bees around me, too. I guess I'm sweet. What's up, buddy? Hi. All right, say bye to everybody, Jermaine. Bye, guys. Till next time, develop awesome skills, guys. Love you all. Peace.